Hi, it's Patrick Hutzel from IntensiveCareHotline.com where we instantly improve the lives of families of critically ill patients in intensive care so that you can have real power, real control and so that you can influence decision making even if you're not a doctor or a nurse in intensive care. This is another episode of Your Questions Answered and in this week's episode I want to answer one of the most frequent questions that we get from our readers and the question this week is how long does it take to wake up from a traumatic brain injury or a severe head injury. Chances are that if you have come to this blog that you are looking for answers for your critically loved one in intensive care who is not waking up after he or she sustained a severe head injury or a traumatic brain injury. Your critically loved one may have sustained a severe head or brain injury after a car accident, a bike accident or after a fall or he or she may have had a stroke or a brain tumor. Technically, strokes or brain tumors don't necessarily fall into the category of traumatic brain injuries or severe head injuries, but patients display similar symptoms and they often require similar lengthy periods to wake up or to recover. The most important thing you need to know if your critically loved one in intensive care is not waking up after a traumatic brain injury or after a severe head injury is that this is often normal and it it's also often a lengthy and at times difficult process for your loved one to wake up. Waking up in intensive care is very rarely a linear or straightforward process, let alone after a traumatic brain injury or after a severe head injury. If there is anything I would compare it to, it's like switching on a light with a dimmer switch, where the lights go on gradually and slowly. There are a few things you need to know if your loved one has sustained a severe head injury or traumatic brain injury. Keep in mind at all times that the brain has a life on its own and can, unlike many other organs such as the liver, the heart, the lungs and the kidneys, not be controlled. Your loved one was very likely sedated with some heavy gun medication such as midazolam, fentanyl or morphine and maybe even thiopentone. Those drugs all take a long time to get out of your loved one's body system and therefore delay the waking up process. Your loved one will also take their own time to wake up, even if it takes many days, many weeks or even many months. Therefore it's difficult to put an absolute number on the time it takes for your loved one to wake up. The level of initial drowsiness or dizziness does not give any indication how long it will take your loved one to wake up. And the intensive care team may be painting a doom and gloom picture and therefore they may have a negative outlook for your critically ill loved one which may not be in the best interest for your critically ill loved one. The negative outlook of the intensive care team may actually stand in the way of your loved one's recovery but you must be optimistic at all times and you must follow your gut feeling. You also must look behind the scenes in an intensive care unit and you must understand the moving parts and how those moving parts may impact on your critically loved one's care your loved one may or may not be receiving. Now the intensive care unit's financial budget and other competing interests such as other admissions awaiting an ICU bed might be directly related to the prognosis the intensive care team is telling you for your critically loved one. The intensive care team may also have limited mindset and they may not be willing to put the time, the effort, the resources and the belief forward that it takes to get your critically loved one out of his or her difficult situation. Now know this Time usually is a natural healer and given the time, the resources, the, e the efforts and the belief system, your critically ill loved one will get better. In 15 years intensive care nursing experience, I have worked in some intensive care units where the intensive care team allowed for patients to wake up in their own time, even if it took many weeks or many months. Those intensive care units didn't have a limited mindset. They had a very positive culture and they believed that time is a healer in and of itself. Other intensive care units 
had a very negative mindset and a very negative culture and they often saw competing interests in having a patient who's not waking up after critical illness such as a traumatic brain injury or a severe head injury, occupying an expensive and scarce ICU bed and the intensive care team in those units often painted a bleak, doom and gloom picture that directly or indirectly went hand in hand with a negative and limited prognosis. I have written a blog post about culture in intensive care and how it impacts on patient care. You can click on this link here. It's therefore absolutely critical that you, as your critically ill loved one's immediate family member, that you directly influence decision making by having control, power and influence. You'll get immediate control, power and influence if you download your free instant impact report now. In the free instant impact report you learn how to speak the secret intensive care language so that the doctors and nurses know straight away that you are an insider and that you know and understand what's really happening in intensive care. In this free report you'll also discover how to ask the doctors and the nurses the right questions, how to eliminate fear, frustration, stress, struggle and vulnerability even if your loved one is dying. You'll discover five killer tips and strategies helping you to get on the right path to control power and influence in your situation. You'll get crucial behind the scenes insights so that you understand what's really happening in intensive care. And you learn how you need to manage doctors and nurses in intensive care. And it's not what you think. With your free instant impact report you'll also get four other free reports and the reports you will be receiving are the six questions you need to ask the most senior doctor in intensive care. 10 things you didn't know doctors and nurses are talking about while you're not at the bedside. The seven answers to the seven most frequently asked questions if your loved one is critically ill in intensive care. Nine myths of being a critically ill patient in intensive care. Thank you for tuning into this week's blog and I'll see you again in another update next week. Make sure you also check out our blog section and you can send me an email to support at intensivecarehotline.com. This is Patrick Hutzel from intensivecarehotline.com and I'll see you again next week with another update.